Posterior polar cataracts are challenging even for skilled cataract surgeons due to the high risk of posterior capsule rupture and vitreous loss during cataract surgery. In this video, we will describe the necessary precautions to be taken to prevent and manage such complications. Identification of the posterior polar cataract on dilated slit lamp examination is the first step in successfully managing this type of cataract. The cataract has a characteristic bullseye or onion peel appearance in the central part of the posterior capsule. We should aim for a capsular excess size of around 5 mm. A larger rexis may not leave adequate space for a sulcus fixated IOL in case of a posterior capsular rent. The rexis should also not be too small as this may lead to increased hydrostatic pressure during hydrodelineation and cause a posterior capsular rupture. Hydro dissection should be avoided as it may cause hydraulic rupture of the posterior capsule and a nucleus drop. Only hydrodelineation is done creating a cushion of epinucleus and an endonucleus which is easily fakeable. It is performed by depressing the tip of the hydrocannula into the substance of the lens followed by multiple injections of fluid given in a controlled manner to hydrodelineate the nucleus from the epinucleus. A characteristic golden ring is obtained. It is important to avoid nucleus rotation as it can lead to a posterior capsular rupture. The technique of nucleus management depends on the grade of the cataract. For soft cataracts, adjacent trenches are created in the nucleus to create a bowl which is then emulsified within the cushion of the epinucleus as seen here. For harder cataracts, step-by-step -step chop in situ and lateral separation technique can be used. Slow motion phacoemulsification with low aspiration, low infusion and low vacuum parameters are preferred. The low vacuum and aspiration rate maintain a stable anterior chamber and the low infusion drives less fluid around the lens. An important caveat is to inject viscoelastic from the side port whenever the phaco or irrigation aspiration probe is withdrawn from the eye. This helps to keep the anterior chamber well formed and prevents forward bulging of the posterior capsule throughout the surgery. Major fluctuation in anterior chamber should be avoided. The epinucleus is stripped 360 degrees from the capsular phonesis before approaching the centrally attached plaque area to avoid loss of epinuclear or cortical matter into the vitreous. The central plaque is left intact till the end. It is then slowly stripped and aspirated in a controlled manner. The cortical matter is removed in a similar fashion. In the event of a posterior capsule rupture, dispersive viscoelastic should be injected from the side port to coat the rent before withdrawing the phaco probe tip from the eye. This helps in tamponading the vitreous and preventing its entry into the anterior chamber. The infusion bottle should be lowered and a bimanual vitrectomy with or without triumphs alone with low suction and high cutting rate should be done for removing the vitreous completely from the anterior chamber. A bimanual irrigation and aspiration should be done for removing any residual cortex. The intraocular lens in an eye without PC rent is carefully injected taking care to avoid the posterior capsule during implantation. IOL implantation in eyes with PC rent depends on the size of the rent. If the rent is small, it can be converted into a posterior capsular excess and a foldable IOL can be implanted in the bag. In case of a large rent, a sulcus supported 3 piece IOL is implanted. An optic capture is done to stabilize the IOL and reduce contact of optic with the iris. By following these 10 tips meticulously, excellent outcomes can be obtained in patients with posterior polar cataract.